Are you cultivating million dollar opportunities? Is what you're doing today worth the wealth perspective, the outcomes, and the values that you want? I'm Justin Hit with Sustainable Wealth Secrets. If you want to create wealth, to transform income into net worth, if you want to accumulate assets over time, you must be in million dollar, even billion dollar opportunities. Let me explain why. There's a lot of small business owners that join my newsletters and listen to my podcasts. And then they come to me and say, look, I can only get 20 bucks out of my client. Now I've had people come to me and say, that's all they can get from a customer. I say, great. What's the customer worth over a lifetime? Like that's the net, by the way, that's not the gross. See, they could have a $5,000 transaction, but when all the numbers get added up, they only get $20 net because it costs so much to get the customer in the door, because it costs so much for the cost of goods, because their overhead is too high. Because of all these other things, when we do the math and realize what is their profit per sale, we get some absurdly tiny number, like 20 bucks. Now, it's different if the offset in that profit is based on them getting a decent salary. Because there are ways to work with numbers, as we've talked about, where you can end up with a very small profit, a 1%, 2% profit, yet you're fully funding your retirement account, yet you've got profit sharing, yet you're doing other things, like building up uh, accounts for your children's college, setting aside money for medical. We're not talking about that. I'll sit down with somebody that will go through the numbers. Now, a lot of folks are shocked when we do a discovery call. And I, and I tell you that up front, you must show up with a summarized P&L. Now, a lot of people can't do that, especially if you're working for somebody else. Not only is it a little bit depressing, but most employees, even when they're making six figures or better, don't really know what their positive net cash flow is, yet alone a pre prerequisite to that, which is a year over year P&L. Now, there are some folks that'll, they're excited. They're excited when I ask for a year over year POL, uh, a PL over the last five years. Now, I give you a summary that you can fill out, but ultimately, they're excited because they know that every year they take into account how much they earn, how much they pay in taxes, how much they have as general expenses, and they can put it on a one sheet of paper. By the way, a five year, you know, PL, historical PL, profit and loss statement can fit on one letter size piece of paper, usually landscape. And this is something that if you have a CPA that you work with can put together, it's something that you can grab your last five years of tax returns and typically put together. Uh, in fact, my CPA has a summary at the beginning of my tax return that has the general categories. Now, when I'm helping a client optimize their income to increase net worth, we're not concerned about how much you spend at Starbucks. See, that's a, a poverty mindset. That's, oh, I can't drink, uh, uh, well, Starbucks really isn't decent coffee, coffee. In fact, Starbucks makes their money by having high sugar, high caffeine coffee, whatever it is. If you're not choosing the quality, pro the quality product, sure, you can change categories. But uh, spending a few dollars a day on a Starbucks, on, on a Mr. Coffee, on a giant pot of Folgers at home, is it going to change your wealth, it's being involved in million dollar opportunities. So if you're making $160,000 a year working for a company that only produces $10 million a year, you're at risk every day when it comes to their cost reduction. Unless you own the company, you're at a high risk of being let go, or you have some kind of professional certification, some kind of uh, thing that the company depends on in order for them to make their business. But that same $160,000 a year in a company that makes a billion dollars a year, maybe a Fortune 1000 company that makes hundreds of millions of dollars a year, you're a necessary expense. Now, if you're in a toll booth position in the organization where perhaps you bring in customers, that $160,000 a year is not a big deal. But if you're a typical engineer, if you're a typical middle manager, if you're typically in an organization as an employee with with $160,000 a year, your internal effectiveness at home to convert that income into net worth better be on the money. You better know how much money's coming in. What are you paying in taxes? Could you reduce your taxes by putting more money in your 401k? Could you reduce your taxes by saving money for your kid's retirement account, you know, your kid's retirement account or your kid's uh, you know, educational account. And then there's different ways of doing that. Again, that's why we recommend certified financial planners that are fee-based. Okay. So you're going to pay an hourly rate. 
to a certified financial planner. They're going to run through all the numbers and they're going to give you ideas. So that's one way to get started. But again, if you're now thinking about how can I save an extra $10,000 a year, you're not in the right mindset to save that $10,000 a year, yet alone to build the wealth that is necessary. The typical employee making $160,000 a year needs to save in retirement in order to prevent the reduction of principal. Now listen carefully, because you're only going to produce about $40,000 a year per million dollars that you got in the bank. So you need $4 million in the bank. Can you see how important it is the million dollar mindset versus whatever money we can save. Hey, you know, maybe we can save a little money on vacations. Now I'm not saying you should go take vacations because I do take the approach of intentional thrift and I'm going to live the very best life I can while focusing first on building wealth, on collecting assets that cash flow. Now I say collecting because some of these can be a lot of fun. It can be like a collection. You know, you get four or five rental properties or you get four or five solid investments. It, it's, it's fun. It's enjoyable. It's like something you might look at and be a little proud that you've collected. Um, but it's not necessarily like a stamp collection or ET, or um, exchange. Uh, what are those uh, electronic artwork or anything like that? Again, everybody's situation is different. The commonality that creates the success, that creates the wealth, that produces the knowledge necessary to surround yourself with assets that cash flow is knowing what the numbers really are. And when you know what the numbers really are, it is millions of dollars, not anything less. Now, if you got $4 million in the bank and you follow the typical 4% draw a year, you can pull out your $160,000 a year. Now that doesn't take into account inflation. See that $4 million need is today's dollars. If you want to keep the same lifestyle, if you want to keep the same uh, general, uh, you know, engagements and even friends, because again, if you're a member of a country club and those, that's where your friends and social circles are, and that co costs you a certain amount of dollars a year, it's going to go up in price, just like everything else around you. And so that $4 million necessary for someone to make $160,000 a year using the 4% draw formula or the residual value of that, that investment, because again, investments are not always going to grow. There will be some years where you may lose a little bit of money. So the reality of this is that $4 million isn't $4 million. In today's money, it's $4 million. So again, today you have to have $4 million, but next year, it's going to be $4,160,000, assuming a 4% rate of inflation. Now, again, when we're looking at present value of money versus future value of money, we have an opportunity cost in there. We have inflation to factor in. And whether you, you factor in 1% inflation or 4% inflation, it typically is going to be much higher than you expect it. But that's my point. Every year you have till retirement, you're going to have to add 4% to that money just to have the same amount of net result. And again, that's why I want you in the habit of doing a profit and loss statement. Again, it's not hard to do. You can, you don't have to have every little detail of your spending. Again, we, we talk about cash accounts. We talk about uh, ways of managing your money through businesses, the value of a consulting service, the value of having more than just your employment. The key to understand here is if you can't look at the numbers, and I know, I know it's scary. It can be very scary to look at the numbers because you know the number needs to be bigger. You know that you're not saving enough. You know that even though you save, you lose the money, so there must be a better way. And again, that's what we're teaching you here because you aren't going to go from high income to high net worth to, to literal wealth that spins off residual income by savings alone. In order to achieve your, your financial goals quickly, there must be a strategy, but that strategy starts with a million-dollar mindset. Now, if we were 40 years ago or we were you know, uh, 50 or 100 years ago, we could say that's a six-figure mindset. Again, inflation. Remember, inflation exists. Too many people have lost their fortunes because they don't understand that the value of a fiat currency is constantly going down. Now, we don't have to get into the argument about gold versus, you know, gold and silver, commodities versus versus anything. That, that is a distraction. If you are able to 
accumulate assets and cash flow. If you are able to do more with your daily earnings, that means sometimes reducing your expenses. But again, I don't want you to, to have to uh, compromise your lifestyle. There are ways to have a culture of thrift. And you've seen it in different cultures around the world. And you've seen it in, in immigrants, for example. They can turn a dollar over 10, 15, 20 times. And so now that $160,000 a year you, you're receiving as your gross income, if you're turning it over twice, it's worth $320,000 in value. Now, again, this could be debt leverage. This could be finding deals, knowing how to find deals. This could be uh, something unique to your skills and characteristics. A lot of my clients have some subject matter expertise. And when they're in their 40s, 50s, that, that age range, they very often can convert that expertise into additional cash flow passive and income uh, active cash flow because there's a lot of people entering the marketplace who don't have the 20 years of experience that they have. They don't have the practical application. Now, now, of course, a lot of you folks in your 40s are starting to experience how employers don't appreciate this because you are going to be a little set in your ways. That's just fair. You've had the expensive experience and now you have a way of doing things. And that's why a lot of people have this poverty mindset because they've they've made bad decisions in the past and they didn't have the right resources. And so they're kind of like being overly cautious. And so if they can save an extra five thousand dollars a year, they are freaking stoked if they can earn another two hundred to three hundred dollars a day. And that's what a lot of the business opportunities push. Then they're they're just super happy. But again, I'm saying that number is too small to be practical for the actual needs that you have. So number one thing you're going to do is create some kind of P&L, profit and loss statement. Now, again, uh, you can take out a sheet of paper and you can write on the top of the sheet of paper how much money you earn. And then below that, you subtract how much you pay in taxes. And then below that, you can make a list of all your monthly expenses and subtract that. And then below that, you can make a, another. It, that's how you work. That's how you do it. And then it tells you how much money is left over. That's better than nothing. But if you're using an accounting system, you're working with a CPA, you're working with a certified financial planner, you should be able to produce over the last five years a summary profit and loss statement. Now, when I ask clients before we do a discovery call or before we do a coaching session for a profit and loss statement in their last couple of weeks of cash flow, I don't want to see every little details. I don't care if they're paying for weird stuff or they're having you know, if it's a category problem, we'll talk about it, but it doesn't matter to me if you go to Starbucks, okay, I would rather you go to a local coffee shop because you can cycle that money through the local economy like we talk about, but I'm not going to criticize you for that. In fact, I don't want to see that category. What I'm talking about here is a high level profit and loss statement. Now, at the bottom of that profit and loss statement, you're going to be able to re, you know, be able to roll over the cash. And I'm, I'm very much simplifying this, by the way, because you want to go from a P&L to a cash flow. You can only invest the positive net cash flow at the end of each month, at the end of each week, and at the end of each day. Next, we're going to talk about assets and liabilities. This is something that you want to chart out and think about. In our coaching session, we're going to convert your liabilities into assets. Sometimes that's where I'll criticize you because if you've been putting that Starbucks on a credit card and you got all this credit card debt, we need to convert that into cash flow. And how do you convert credit card debt into cash flow? It's kind of hard sometimes. But again, you might have mortgages. You might have uh, a property that's underutilized. You might have intellectual property that's underutilized. Those are things that we we try to flesh out on a, uh, uh, a balance sheet, which is your assets versus liabilities. But I want you to go beyond just cash assets. There are certain things you know, certain experiences you have, certain business relationships, certain connections, certain abilities that we need to address because that's how we get to the million dollar mindset. Because the biggest question is when we have this information and we sit down on a coaching thing, most people, 99% of people will say, I don't know what my million dollar opportunity is. Now, it's a little bit different when I'm working with somebody who already has a million, maybe $5 million in the bank. They want to know what their $10 million opportunity is. They want to know what their billion dollar opportunity is. And we can find that very often through an assessment, a dialogue, and a focus on assets that cash flow, the utilization of capital, 
So for example, if there's any marketing going on in the organization, high utilization of capital means that for every dollar you put out in marketing, you get it back in the quickest amount of time. So you put out a dollar in marketing today, you want to receive all that money back plus the value of the product plus the profits within a certain period of time. We also want to look at processes. We want to look at controls, stop gaps, different things that we're doing to hedge our wealth so that we don't lose our wealth. We want to look at tax strategy. We want to look at other things. Now, this isn't just one person that looks at these things. We do need to bring in experts in particular areas as the advice that I've given here today is not tax advice, nor is it legal uh, specific advice for you because I don't know your situation. In fact, uh, not until you schedule an appointment through the Sustainable Wealth Secrets website at www.sustainablewealthsecrets.com, I really don't know your situation. And, and But I'm trying to give you the tools so that you can at least have a better idea what's going on. And if you're trying to save another $100,000, that's probably better than another ten. But why aren't you thinking about the million dollars? Why aren't you looking for the million dollar opportunity? Now, the first response I get from the majority of the people is, is I'm not a million dollar person. And that's okay if you think that today, but that's not going to get you to the $4 million you need in today's dollars in order to reproduce $160,000 in earnings. Now, the numbers keep getting bigger. And, 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 and here's the mindset behind the intentional thrift. If you cannot live on less today, then how will you live on less in retirement? That's that's the basics, right? So we practice intentional thrift today. We practice strategies of million dollar thinking, hundred million dollar thinking. We implement strategies that transform the things that we have around us into cash flow. In fact, we realize those things are not that important, but the the portability of cash, the portability of of revenue, is very important. We work on written strategies rather than hopes and dreams because. A million dollar mindset is no good if you don't write down a plan. And again, I help clients with these plans. We end up with wealth binders. We end up with, with family plans. We end up with different structure than we might have today. We also end up with greater security, greater uh, wealth in measurable forms and also immeasurable wealth. Now, if you want to get involved and start moving this direction, it can be as easy as adding another zero to your goals. Now, zero really isn't anything. It's just a zero. And so if you have a $10,000 goal today, let's put another zero after that and make it a $100,000 goal. And then maybe after you've got some progress in that direction, you get the help that you need to make more progress, you add another zero to it. Now you got a million dollars. It's just two zeros, two zero, the little round things, goose eggs. You know, I've known consultants to get goose eggs in a year, yet still make more than $100,000 on their adjusted gross income. Meaning they had no additional active income come in Yet they're still producing more than what they feel is necessary for their daily expenses because they, again, spend less than they earn, which gives them positive free net cash flow, which they had invested in previous years when they were making three hundred and twenty, six hundred and seventy thousand dollars a year. Because you can have a really good year where you're just gangbusters making the money. And if you let your expenses expand to the size of your wallet, then when that wallet shrinks, there's all kinds of mindset problems that happen. And that's where a lot of that, uh, you know, dollar thinking comes from poverty mindset comes from, because maybe you've had a setback in the past. Well, let's put that behind us. Adjust for a realistic view. I gave you the documents, P and L cash flow report, balance sheet, and a plan. And you're saying, well, Justin, can it really be that simple? Well, yeah, if you've got the right coaching and you've got the right uh, concepts in your mind and you're objectively looking at what you're doing. And sometimes even when the people around you are criticizing you for what you're doing, you just keep pushing ahead. And then when they didn't take into account inflation, when they didn't understand market conditions and changes, when they didn't understand the assembly of assets that cash flow, when they didn't have the proper legal structure, when they didn't have the, the approach necessary to convert income into wealth, well, it's not your, you know, it's not your job to save for them. It's not your job to solve their problems. But you may have an affordable loan for them for a, a viable business opportunity because you may be able to have the skills and you will have the skills to evaluate those opportunities in order to find out what's profitable and what's not. There is a reason why the wealthy keep getting wealthier. Now, there's also a reason why some wealthy people suddenly are not wealthy anymore. But again, 
It's just four simple things assembled appropriately, reviewed critically, and a plan developed to take action. If you need help with implementation, if you need help with plans and strategies, if you need help with other aspects of wealth building, I have more than 20 years of experience doing this for myself and others. I've been able to produce for clients hundreds of millions of dollars. Now, again, the bigger clients produce bigger numbers. There are some individual clients that are responsible. I, I think I, I, I'm claiming 600 million or something in new revenue for businesses. There are some businesses where they got $20 million in a chunk. They got big money in big chunks. I would prefer that you have the mindset to get that and the plan to implement for that because you know if, if all you're trying to do is save an extra few bucks a day, that's what poor people do. You know, when somebody begs on the street, they aren't asking for a million dollars. Essentially, the same thing a beggar is doing on the street, asking for enough money to feed themselves that day, is no different than going to five banks and asking them for a loan for your business. You know, you're still begging. There are different channels, different opportunity, different focus. It starts with the million dollar mindset. So if you want help looking at your million dollar idea with no judgment, no pressure, well, there'll be some pressure. I'll take that back because you're going to provide some information up front. I'm going to do a critical analysis of your situation, your assets, both soft and real. And through these summary documents, we'll start the conversation that creates the coaching necessary for you to get the results that you're looking for. For you to be able to develop the wealth strategies in your own personal life and family so that you can create generational wealth, so that you can turn the tide of past experiences to inform, grow, and produce the cash flow necessary to live the way you want. I'm not promising you you're going to have a yacht. I'm not promising you that you're going to have a Rolls Royce. While it's not unreasonable, um, it's more achievable for you to be in a situation where you work on your own terms, where you have plenty of cash flow coming in so that even if you have a medical emergency, it's not a big deal. You just get the help that you need. So that your children can go to the right schools in the right environments, so that you can have a good community, so that you can have a stable home life, so that you can have the lifestyle that you desire. It's not about opulence as much as it's about practical application that turns your income into wealth. More importantly, it sets up a cycle of increasing your income, increasing your wealth, and building your prosperity. I'm Justin Hit with Sustainable Wealth Secrets, where we transform your long-term prosperity through actions that we take today. If you're about implementation, you're in the right place. Do more than just listen to these podcasts. Take notes, ask questions, and get involved. Wealth is easier to achieve than you can imagine. Write with your questions to www sustainablewealthsecrets.com. Either join our free newsletter or ask questions on the contact page. There's a form there where you can simply put in your email, name, and message, and I'll get back with you uh, for details. If you have an idea for an upcoming episode, that's what we do with the questions. We answer your questions. We create new episodes. We help clients. If you are ready for coaching, there are details about coaching opportunities as well as a few courses we're putting together but we actually have a much many more courses offline in our catalog than online. So, you know, ask your questions. Thanks for listening and I'll see you in the next podcast.